This is Debbie, and welcome back to another brand new episode of The Offbeat Life, where I speak to inspiring individuals who took a leap to follow their passions and found their purpose along the way. Want to learn how you can live an offbeat life or share your own experiences? Maybe get some advice from people who have been there. Then join our Facebook group, The Offbeat Life. Again, that's The Offbeat Life. I'll see you there. I am so delighted to have today's guests, Allison Schlanger and Allison Berna. Allison and Allison left lucrative careers in order to open Appleseeds NYC, which is a fun play space for children. Ten years later, they have several locations in New York and have created a musical franchise called Songs for Seeds. Not only are they incredible businesswomen, but they have also successfully blended work and family life together. Hi, ladies. Hi, Allison and Allison. Thank you so much for taking your time from your busy, incredible lives to uh, speak with me today. Can you fill in the gaps and tell us a little bit more about your offbeat lifestyles? I think that um, the reason why we're talking to you together is because at a certain point in both of our lives, we decided to leave Um, our careers that we had spent over a decade um, working, you know, very hard at and and building reputations in and, and, and creating, you know, lives for ourselves within those careers. And we decided to jump off those career tracks and figure out if there was a real work life balance out there. We had twins at the same time. And after we had our babies, um, I have twin boys that are 12 and Allison has twin girls that are 12. Um, after we had our, our oldest kids, we realized that we weren't the, on the, we didn't feel the same way about our careers, which we absolutely loved, but we just couldn't go to work in the same way. And we wanted to try and figure out if we could come up with another way to have a career outside of the home that incorporated our kids and our families into um, those careers in a in an organic way. How do you balance your your family life right now, um, especially with three children and then doing the business? I have I have actually three ways. I, I, whenever I'm actually going to talk next week about work life balance on this panel, and I've been thinking about it a lot. And mm-hmm. I I have three ways I answer that um, to people, and I think it's um, a work life balance is inherently filled with tension, right? And so if you, if you avoid the tension, that's where the stress comes from. But if you engage the tension, um, it's, it's, it's prioritization of the, of the issues. Um, and then, um, the second thing is that, um, it's, it's an elusive balance. It's like, I think I've, I've, ne- I've never tried to achieve it because I know it's actually not real in a way. Like, it's more elusive. And I think of it in terms of macro versus micro. So, but I I think what I'm trying to do is not strike a balance in the micro. Every day is not going to feel perfect. I'm never going to be amazing at work and feel like I got everything accomplished in my job and still be, feel like I was a great mom that day that I was able to do drop off and pick up and go to their activities and make dinner. And then another day I may be super mom and I feel like I picked them up at school and I was able to, you know, take them to the party, but then work suffers a little bit too, or, or exercise or whatever. So on the micro, I almost never achieve it, but I never try. I think I have to look at it in the macro and say, you know, looking back, did I, did I strike a balance in how I'm feeling? If I start to feel an urge like or a nudge against one of the priorities shifting, like I wasn't really, I'm not feeling connected right now to my kids or, or I'm feeling like my work is really suffering, then you sort of shift back. But in the macro, I think it, it works. And then the final thing about work-life balance I say is um, I want to reframe the name of it to maybe work-life blend mm-hmm. or work-life integration rather than work-life balance because yeah. work-life balance to me implies you have to make a choice that there's a scale and it has to be always in balance and when one is down the other is up and one is vice versa whereas work-life blend is making things that you do in your life a part of your work and that's what Alison and I have done we basically we basically left our jobs because we couldn't there was no way to strike a work-life balance we created our work around our lives there's a way you can integrate and blend work in life that doesn't have to make it such a tension and a balance, if that makes sense. I love, I love all of the 
things that you just said. And it's it's also really apparent that the partnership that you all have between both of you ladies and obviously your partners, that, I, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but that definitely plays a lot of what's the role on your um, company and business as well. So how do you stay motivated and inspired and focused every day and not get distracted? Because obviously you have a lot of things that you have to get done at home and your business. Um, I think we're motivated every day because uh, for all the benefits of owning your own business, you know, that it allows you to be in control of your schedule, the hours of your day and how you're going to balance or blend your work and your, your personal life. There's also, you know, a lot of stress to owning your own business. It's a lot of responsibility. There are people that are need to get, that need to get paid to take care of their families. There are bills that need to get paid to turn the lights on and the heat and the air conditioning. And I think a lot of the times we're motivated by the, you know, on one hand, we're motivated by the pure business aspect that we need to keep the lights on to keep our families happy that are coming here and depend on apple seeds and songs for seeds and also our staff that we've hired and committed ourselves to. But um, it's also that we've been open 10 years and sometimes it feels like it's been a really long time, but we're still creating new things every day. So it's still exciting. Like we opened up apple seeds 10 years ago, but just Four years ago, we started working on this franchise business for our music program, Songs for Seeds, which is a music class for kids. And in the past two years, we have um, created partnerships to open up 25 Songs for Seeds across the country. 17 of them are open right now. So in the past two years, it's almost like we've started this whole new business. And it takes so much new creativity, not only you know, with curriculum, but with marketing collateral, with personalities that we're working with now and ways to get the word out there. So we're not doing the same old, same old every day, even though it all falls under the umbrella of Apple Seeds and Songs for Seeds. Every day it feels like we're creating a new, um, a new project or a new way to get the, you know, to get what we're doing out there and to make it more meaningful for the kids and the families and to expand to more communities. Um, so it's definitely, it's easy to stay motivated about the projects themselves and the work. Yeah. It's, it's great because you're both reinventing yourselves and your business and the ones, you know, you need to be challenged and you're creating that for yourself with, with all of these different things that you're doing, uh, with apple seeds first as a playground and classes. And now with a franchise, which is incredible and amazing because that's, you know, like you said, that's how you keep yourself motivated. Let's go back a little bit to your past jobs because you already had established careers that you know for most people when they look at it it's like oh my gosh this is incredible because Allison um you worked with MTV and then Allison you worked for the United Nations yeah, the yeah. United Nations and it's amazing for for people to see this and for you to go out of that and then create your own thing create apple seeds and succeed in the way that you have well I think whenever anybody's leaving a career, you know, yesterday, it's funny, we had a manager come into our office and, and tell us um, about uh, that he's leaving and he was shaking and he was saying, I, I've been with you guys for six years and I love it here so much. And I, it's really hard to leave a good thing, but there's something inside of me. And he kept like pulling his hand to his belly, almost like this feeling, this gut feeling that it was time to change. He got an offer and he wasn't even sure. And it wasn't about money and he loves being here. It just felt this need to change. And I call that the nudge. Mm -hmm. And I think that inside of all of us, there's a nudge towards something. And that is part of living an offbeat life. I think people who choose that life are often um, choosing it to follow some nudge, whether it's a, a nudge and urge to travel and find, go on a journey for um, self-discovery or whether it's a midlife crisis or whether it's... And in our cases, when we left MTV and UNICEF, I think we can both put, put that in the category of a nudge that had, it was literally, you couldn't go back to the way like you knew life before once you had kids. And um, before that, I think, you know, when I used to work at NBC before UNICEF and I remember leaving and I left both NBC when I moved to UNICEF and UNICEF when I started Appleseeds in a really positive, happy place. And it was, it wasn't that I was leaving because I was unhappy. It was leaving because you knew there was something else 
that might be better and life, you know, life so short kind of mentality. What am I waiting for? But it, it was really this feeling. And in the case of NBC to UNICEF, it was I wanted to be in the stories talking about refu- working with refugees, not talking about them. Yeah. And so that's what motivated. In the case of UNICEF, it was I love going to West Africa, but I don't know if I want to get on a plane for, you know, X number of hours for X number of days to work with other people's children. When my children are sitting at home in New York City, I want to be with them, you know? Mm-hmm. And it was just this really clear moment for me that I was, I knew I couldn't, it couldn't be the same. I think a lot of parents feel that when they have children. So as, as, un, as unglamorous as the answer is that we had kids and we couldn't go back to life before, that's really the answer. I mean, it was just this nudge towards wanting to be present in their lives. But I will also say that the minute we started talking about it, this excitement takes over when you're creating something that's truly your own. We both had um, these amazing jobs uh, and we worked for these incredible organizations that allowed us to be really creative. Um, But there's levels of bureaucracy when you're working at a big company. And when we could just sit down and like think of what we were going to call this indoor play space and what kind of playground was going to be inside and what type of classes we would and offer what logo and, and, graphics right, and, and yeah. what, what colors would we paint it? Like all of that was so exciting. It was almost hard. Once we like opened up, you know, the box of ideas, it was hard to push them all back in and pretend that we didn't want to do that because When you're starting something new, it's exciting. You don't know all the blood, sweat, and tears that have to go into it. You just think about, and then we're going to do this, and then we're going to do this, and then we're going to do this. It's all positivity. And I think that um, for as much as we loved our past jobs, thinking about something that would be entirely ours, born from us, and we would be able to say yes, no, yes, no, the whole way through, it's, it's addicting and exciting. You know, it's... The big risk is it's the financial risk. Like, can you afford to not? And when I use the word afford, I don't, don't mean financially. I mean also psychologically. And you know, can leave the job that you knew and the and the lifestyle that you knew, and and take a chance to do something that you really believe in. But there's no guarantee. Yeah, I think. A lot of people, especially now, because of everything that's happening in the world, and you know, security is a really big thing for most people, right? Yeah. And we stop ourselves from doing something that we really want to do because we're so fearful and afraid of what's going to happen that we never get to do any of that. What advice would you give someone who is really struggling to find themselves or they already know what they want to do, but they're just so afraid? Because obviously you both took a really huge step leaving these incredible jobs. I think, um, well, first I think people should evaluate what it is that is maybe holding them back. And usually it's fear. And you brought up security. I think it's interesting. Most people don't do everything from running a marathon to starting a business. And the basis is probably fear and lack of support. Um, there's a couple, there are a couple of things I want to say to this, but one is like when we both looked at your questions, the one that stood out for us was what is your biggest failure and what did you do to overcome it? And literally neither of us had an answer. And I think it's because of how we view failure. I don't necessarily believe in failure. I think it's, it's just data. When you fail at something, you can look at it as a setback that just allows you to evaluate and grow. I mean, we've had, quote, failures throughout the 10 years of apathies if we view them as failures. But we, what we prefer to view them as, and I think why we couldn't answer this question, is there are, moments of, there are moments and opportunities for growth and learning. It's like when we tell our children, you know, they, when one of my daughter gets really upset when she makes a mistake, and I'm constantly like, well, if you don't make mistakes, how do you – how do you not know what to do? How do you not grow from there? And we, maybe we see the business the same way. They're, they're all opportunities to learn and grow. So maybe that's what holds people back is that fear of failure. And if they lose that concept of what failure actually means, um, it might help them to, to, to do what it is they're looking for. Most people are probably afraid to do that. And and for the most part, because you begin to answer your own questions and that's another fear, you know, what your answer is going to be like. (laughs) So you, Allison, you talked about this a little bit and about setbacks and failures. And has there been any setbacks that you have both encountered that uh, stopped you in your tracks in, in a way? And what did you do to overcome it? I think that, you know, we've had setbacks 
And sometimes they sort of cast like a dark cloud over what's going on for a little while. But Craig always says, KMF, keep moving forward. And it's, it's, cheesy because he got it from the movie Rocky <laughs> but, but on some level it's it is inspiring that like when we have a setback we really do regroup and pivot kind of pretty quickly because I don't think any of us want to live with that black cloud or that dark cloud over us for too long so we're, we're quick to acknowledge like okay we may have screwed that up or maybe maybe that didn't go as planned but then we're quickly digging out from like all right, how do we how do we fix it? How do we make it better? No, one, the four of us are not willing to sit in the in the area of maybe that wasn't the best idea or maybe that didn't work as planned. We quickly want to fix it and get to a place that feels a lot better. So partnerships fell apart at the last minute, and we quickly you know just pivot and move forward, pivot and move forward. It motivates us to actually figure it out quickly. Um, but there's definitely you know there. There are definitely setbacks. It's great that you created these opportunities for yourself from the setback. I feel that when you are given these different things that you have to go around and um, it makes you become more creative in a lot of ways and it gets you out of yourself and really think outside of the box as well. Yeah, it also sometimes gives you the energy to like really push something forward because... It's, you're like, okay, I really have to pull myself by, up by my bootstraps now and get creative and think about how we're going to figure our way out of this. And it, you know, it, it pushes you. It, you know, it gives you new motivation for that day or that week or that month. Definitely. Both of you are obviously really successful businesswomen. And can you give us an idea of how you have earned to have this lifestyle? Well, I feel like on some level when you own your own business and we're still, you would think after 10 years we would be coasting, but because we keep creating and we just recently created this whole new business, this franchising business, we're constantly making money to put it back into the business to give us the ability to grow the business. You can't grow it. I mean, the thing about money is like, you can't, you can't grow a business without money. You can't take on new ideas and new ventures and expand without money. So on some level, sometimes I think we feel like we're like on this, you know, what is it called? Like a hamster wheel, right? Like constant reinvestment in the the growth. Like just as, just as you feel like you're coasting, you're like, and now we have this idea that costs X amount of money. And, and we never pictured ourselves just owning one playground location in New York city. So it is constant reinvestment. If money is the end goal, um, it may not be the best way to see it because it comes and comes and it come, comes and goes and it's reinvested and it's used. I think if your values and your, your end goals are, are more, uh, are, are sort of conceptual money is the tool to help you get there. If the end goal is right. money. I mean, it's not our end goal for some people that may work, but for us, it's more money is the means with which we're going to achieve some of the goals that we've set for ourselves and our company, not the, I mean, we all want to make money. But I think if you're driven by that, it's a very different type of experience than we have. You couldn't have lasted this long if it was all that you wanted to do, right? (laughs) And I will say one other thing, and I don't want this to become like gender stereotyping, but I think Allison and I have similar um, qualities that I don't want, I don't mean to make this sound like, oh, money doesn't motivate us, but it's not the motivating factor of what we're doing every day. But that we're, we kind of have that luxury because Craig and Bobby, who are our business partners, really do focus on the bottom line a lot more than we do. And somebody needs to. It's not realistic to own your own business and not have a person focusing on the bottom line. We can't sit here and pretend that that's what happens. But because there are four principles in this business and we do split up the responsibilities, the truth is that the worrying and the focusing and the managing of the bottom line does fit more in their wheelhouse and the creating and the overseeing and the human resources falls a lot in our wheelhouse. And I don't want that to sound very gender stereotypy, but it's kind of how between the four of us individuals, it has broken out. So it allows us to sometimes blissfully walk through ideas and, and move things forward without really focusing on a exactly what they're costing, but our business partners are on top of it. And sometimes we get hit with the reality stick. Yeah. Which 
you know, just pretty much shows us that your partnership is really solid and you have a lot of different skills that um, one person may not have and the other person has, which is a really great way to create partnerships and a business to, to grow in that way. So what is it right now that you're working on that's really exciting the both of you? Professionally is um, franchising. We, like I said, did not know we were going to be um, even outside of Manhattan, let alone across the country with our music program. So Apple Seeds is what we've been talking about, this all-in-one play space for children. But Songs for Seeds is our music class. It's a 45-minute, three-piece live rock band for kids. It's super fun. There are nine sections, but it's really an early childhood class. And so there are two things that excite me about this. One is that we are franchising, which is basically like it is starting another business that has absolutely almost nothing to do with what we did 10 years ago when we opened Apple Seeds, because franchising is not only a different industry, but dealing with each individual owner has been a lesson in so much for me um, in terms of some need more marketing support, some need more financial advice, some need more therapy because they've just, you know, rolled over their 401ks to start a business. So managing people and relationships and trying to understand what a child in, in, in Austin, Texas is going to feel differently than a child in Seattle, Washington. And so it's been, it's been very exciting and intimidating. Um, but it's, it's um it's great and the other thing within that is we have a more than music campaign that we just launched and it's probably for me the most exciting thing we've launched for personal i think i would just say um the team c possibility stuff that i do really excites me it intimidates me enormously because i'm joining doing uh one giant endurance challenge a year it's usually something that i think is too hard and i freak out about it the months prior and it forces me to train and stay in shape and um, it gets me to different countries in the world and I love to travel like most people like you and um, it, it's really it's the most exciting thing because uh, like we just climbed Mount Kilimanjaro in November so I got to see Tanzania and Kenya and now we're going to China and next November to run a portion of the Great Wall and kayak and and um, and cycle so it it's good training for me athletically, which is something that is really important to me for myself. And it's also a way to travel and see other cultures and um, raise money for a cause that our group supports, which is blindness. So that is super exciting for me. We definitely need a lot of these things. And I'm sure if there's parents listening to this right now and you want something that will be really great to be able to do at home, and work to definitely look at um, Allison and Allison's uh, franchise. I mean, it's one of the most exciting parts of franchising is that we're getting to meet these other many times um, young parents, moms, dads, or people who just love kids across the country who are now seeking that same work-life balance or blend, and they want to be in control of their lives. They want to be in control of the hours that they're with their family. They want to be in control of the hours that they're at work. They want to give back to their community. And through Songs for Seeds, um, because of what so what we got for our lives out of Apple Seeds and Songs for Seeds, now they're able to, you know, interpret that to their own lives. And it's, you know, it's a very relatable thing. And it's in, it's great to work with so many people across the country towards a similar personal and professional goal. Um, and being a business owner is an exciting thing. And owning a Songs for Seeds franchise is, is, a, is a attainable business to own when you're starting out as your first business. Um, and it's exciting and it makes kids really, really, really happy, like really happy, yeah. which is, which is so much fun. It, it, there's nothing more fun than that. And you get to spend time with your kids as well. So <laughs> and you get to spend time with your kids, you bring them to class. Yeah, exactly. So if our listeners want to know more about what you guys do and about the franchise, where can they find you? Well, we have a, uh... As Songs for Seeds has its own website, so it's songsforseeds.com, and then there's a section on there where they can click on the franchise, and there's a Get Started button. And once they click that Get Started button, it takes them to another site that explains much more about the opportunity, and they can fill out a little 
email and it comes to us and we get back to them within 24 hours and usually set a phone call and a phone call doesn't ever, you know, it's never, it's never a bad idea. You just learn more about the opportunity. We've met the most amazing people through listeners of, um, you know, different things we've done and, and media stories and people just, it sparks a little interest inside somebody that says, maybe I want to, maybe I do want to work for myself. Maybe I do want to work from home and at flexible hours. Maybe I do want to bring my kid to work with me or at least, you know, work with children somehow, or, you know, and get involved and work with musicians and in a really cool giving back way. Um, and we've, we've met so many amazing, amazing people, um, through exactly this kind of, of interview and, and yeah, they can find us at songtrueseeds.com. Perfect. Well, thank you so much ladies for speaking with me and for all of the incredible information that you gave us. Thank you so much. Thank you, Debbie. Bye, Debbie. Bye. Bye. I hope you enjoyed this episode of The Offbeat Life with Allison and Allison. Make sure to visit theoffbeatlife.com for killer resources and so much more. Again, that's theoffbeatlife.com. Love a good audiobook as much as I do? Of course you do. (laughs) You're in luck. I'm giving away a free audiobook and a 30-day trial to audible.com. Visit offbeatbook.com to get your free gift. Again, that's offbeatbook.com.